Hi there! Thank you so much for joining me tonight. This is Julie DiMatteo from ThePaperPixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And in tonight's Facebook Live tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute shadow box gift box for a little mini travel size lotion. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera. Here is what we're going to make tonight. Okay, it's a super cute shadow box gift box that kind of has a sleeve cover. And then we've got this um, little shadow box that perfectly fits one of these little travel size hand lotions that I found on Amazon. So a big shout out to my Paper Pixie fan, Barbara, for tuning me into these lotions. Super cute. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to use Rich Razzleberry paper here. This piece of Rich Razzleberry measures eight inches by nine and three eighths. I'm gonna bring in my Simply Scored. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna score on all four sides and four different places. And that's gonna be half an inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and two and three quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those score lines. funny looking grid here, all right? Then for these shadow boxes, on the short side, so along the eight inch side, I'm gonna score at the top and the bottom, only down to the second score line here, and that's gonna be at three and one quarter, so down to the second score line, and four and three quarters down to the second score line. See that? Only going down to the second score line. We'll repeat that on the opposite side, so the opposite short side. Three and one quarter, four and three quarters. Then I'm gonna rotate to the long side, and we're gonna make two score lines at both the top and the bottom, but this time we're gonna score down to the fourth score line. So two and one quarter down to the fourth score line, and seven and one eighth down to the fourth score line. Rotating 180 to the opposite side, again two and one quarter, and seven and one eighth. Just show you those two. So those are only going down to the fourth score line. All right, let me bring in a template real quick. This is a not a pretty template, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> So we're actually going to be cutting away quite a bit of these corners. Now we've done all of those score lines. This diagonal line here, I will show you as we do it, but we're just going to create that using our scissors when we cut these out. A couple things I want to point out. With these diagonal lines, this is going to be the shadow box, which is going to kind of give it that picture frame feel. It's these little diagonal parts here. All right, and then we've got these little tabs. Now you've probably seen a lot of shadow boxes over the last few years. They're kind of the craze in the paper crafting community. Um, I love putting these little tabs because I feel that it really holds the box very nicely together here at the corners. It's not 100% necessary, but again, I just feel like it gives it a much sturdier feel to it. So that's why you've got these little silly looking tabs here. So let's go ahead and get to cutting. And this will probably be a little bit difficult to see. I'm gonna leave the template here kind of in the background so that you can see what we're doing. And I, you know, I've made quite a few shadow boxes, so I kind of have a method to my madness as I cut these out. Um, but whatever is easiest for you to kind of picture this template as well as make cuts. So typically what I do is I cut up this line here, I kind of start where those tabs are, so on either side of those, and then I start to cut away these sections. We're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. So don't worry about those short score lines that we made. Those are really just there for cutting lines. I've done all the folding and burnishing. Now I'm going to get to my cutting. And it's a little hard to explain while I cut. I don't want to confuse you, so I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting. And as I finish each corner, you'll kind of see it come together. Okay. Bring that template out. 
out so you can see. All right, so we've done at least this part. We haven't gone into this part where we're gonna do the diagonal. I'm gonna do that now. So I'm cutting up that short score line we made. And then what we're doing is cutting from this score line here at a diagonal to meet the next score line down. And I actually find it easier to cut that from the back side. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And cut that away. So there's one corner and I'm just gonna work my way around. Okay, so that's really everything cut out. We've got our tabs, we've got our diagonal pieces here. And then the last thing I do, just to give a little bit more of a finishing touch, is I'm gonna go ahead and do a slight notch, kind of cutting out a little wedge from all of these little sides here. The sides as well as all the little tabs. And that just makes sure that we don't have any edges of our paper hanging over just gives it a much nicer finish all right so we've done all the cutting there I typically like to use tear and tape adhesive for this but for tonight's video I'm just gonna use fast fuse and then I'm gonna run that along all the outside little half inch sections so all there on the outside there and then I'm gonna put that on all of the little four tabs. And then what we wanna do is to put adhesive right along this diagonal part here, and that's gonna allow that to sit snug and fl um, flush right here on our shadow box, okay? And you just need to put a little bit of adhesive right along that diagonal part. See that? You do the same thing with the tear and tape. The only thing you wanna be careful of when you're using the fast fuse is to make sure not to stick these tabs down to your surface because they will stick, all right? So I like to do these long sides that don't have the diagonal pieces first. And the trick for me that works really well is to fold this on the first score line and on the third score line, okay? So first score line, I'm folding it down, second, third score line, and I can just press that down flat. It's gonna go right where I want it to, and there's one side of the shadow box, okay? Do the same thing, so folding on that first score line, then the third score line, and pressing into place. Now this whole piece is flat and it's just gonna square up right where you want it to go. Okay, so we've got our two sides. Then next I'm gonna do and it is adhere these tabs. And we're just gonna go ahead and meet this edge to this edge to give that that squared box corner. And we'll just do that all the way around. Okay, so now we've got the, most of the box put together here. Now with these, what I find is to bend it on the second score line, kind of bending it on the first and the second, but you want this edge, I'm gonna point on this side because it's easier to see, this edge to push up flush against this back wall. I hope that makes sense. I'm just kind of curling it under making sure that that side pushes to that back wall and then press down while also trying to square up these corners. See that? And I just kind of pressed these diagonal parts into place because we had that fast fuse on the back side of those. And again, let's see if I can do this from an angle. So I'm kind of curving this and putting that edge this edge flat up against that black wall. 
pushing it as far in as it'll go before I press it down into place. And then while I press it down into place, just kind of squaring up those corners. And voila, shadow box. Very, very sturdy box. I love it. And then our little lotion should fit right into that shadow box. And it's in there. It's not going to slide around a whole lot. It will come out easily, but it just is a perfectly snug fit. Okay? So that's the inside of our beautiful gift box. Now to create the outside, I've got another piece of matching cardstock, so rich razzleberry. And this measures five and three quarters by six inches, okay? And for this one, I'm gonna bring in the Stampin' Trimmer because we're gonna do some more precise scoring measurements here just to make sure that this will fit around our shadow box. So on the five and three quarter inch side, we are gonna score on the five and three quarter side at seven eighths, actually. I like to do my seven eighths over here. Anything like an inch and a quarter or smaller, I like to use the left or the right side of my uh, score, my my Stampin' Trimmer. So seven eighths, and then four and seven eighths, or easy enough, you can just rotate it 180 degrees and do seven eighths again. If you want to just remember one score line. All right, so seven eighths on either side. Then I'm gonna rotate it to the long side, which is along the six inch side. And we're gonna score that at two and nine sixteenths, which is one tick mark past two and a half. And again, I'm just gonna rotate it around 180 and do two and nine sixteenths again. Alternatively, you could do three and seven sixteenths. All right, so it's gonna look like that. Let me bring in a quick template. There's their score lines. This is a pretty simple box. Now we are actually going to cut up each of these short sections stopping at the first horizontal score line, but we're going to remove these squares. So let me first fold and burnish on all the score lines. All right, so we folded and burnished on all the score lines. All right, so again, we're only gonna cut up these little short score lines. We're gonna basically cut away these two squares. And there's a reason for that. If I were to use those as tabs, what happens is the shadow box on the inside catches on them. And so um, it just makes it difficult for the recipient to slide the shadow box back in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those away. So first, I'm just gonna cut up those lines to that horizontal line. Okay, so now we've got these little flaps, and then I'm just going to remove those. So I'll just fold what I want to keep out of the way and remove that. Do the same thing on the other side. And that's what we're left with. All right, so we're going to use some beautiful designer series paper from the Petal Garden designer series paper stack. And we're going to use this beautiful pattern here that's got Calypso coral and rich razzleberry and old olive as well. Now this piece measures two and seven sixteenths by three and seven eighths. And I'm going to just go ahead and before we put the box together, adhere that to the top. And this should fit right inside this section here, you've got a little bit of a 16th of an inch of the rich razzleberry that's gonna peek around. All right, so there's that. Then I'm gonna grab the three quarter inch circle punch and we're gonna put these little finger notches in so that it's easy to slide the shadow box in and out. And what I like to do is punch those both at the same time. <clears throat> so without smushing this side of the box, I'm just lining up the edges along here, okay, just so that they're lined up and I can punch those out at the same time. And then I'm just going to gently flip my punch upside down, try to center it as best I can. And I'm going just under about halfway and punch. You gotta kind of put some pressure on it because we're punching through basically three layers of paper there. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is the section opposite where you put the designer series paper, we're gonna put adhesive right along these edges here. And let me grab my fast fuse again. Okay, so just right there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my shadow box and kind of put it into place. And put the, adhe the adhesive side flap down first and then this one into place and you can put it as snug as you want. We've got some wiggle room here. Press that into place, flip it over. Same thing, put the adhesive side down first and then the other flap into place. And then that should fit very nicely inside there. Now let's go ahead and decorate this. We'll do a little bit of stamping. Now I've got a new stamp set and punch to show you. You won't be able to order them until January 3rd, but it's the stamp set, A Good Day. And I'm so excited, but they brought back scalloped circle punches. We have two of them. Let me show you. This is one and three eighths, and there's also a one and one eighth. I love it. So happy to have scalloped circle punches because when I'm making multiples, punches for me are the way to go. So super cute stamp set. We're going to use this sentiment, thank you so much. This would be like a little hostess thank you gift. And I'm going to stamp that in rich razzleberry on whisper white. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and punch this out. Again, this is the one and three eighths inch scalloped circle punch. And what I'm gonna do slightly differently on this one is a one and a half inch circle punch out of Rich Razzleberry. I love this here, but I felt like it needed a little bit of color behind the sentiment. All right, so I just stuck that on the one and a half inch circle punch. I'm gonna grab my 1 8 circle punch and we're just gonna punch a little hole just on the side here. I'm turning that into a little tag. See that? Oh, such a cute little sentiment. I love this stamp set and punches. And then we're going to use the Rich Razzleberry Stitched Edge Ribbon. Alrighty, look at that, our little shadow box gift box for a little mini lotion. A super sweet gift that's handmade. I love it. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.